The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Wednesday morning, 9.06 a.m. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and we got markets pulling back just a bit this morning. You got the S&Ps off half a percent. We're trading down 22 points at 44.82. You check out the acceleration we've had, man, 48.08. That's the high on January 4th. The market sells off. We make a few lows right near the area of 41.30, right? You're down to a low of 41.01 on February 24th. You touch an area of 41.38 on March 8th, and you get down to 41.29 on March 15th. And then, man, you talk about a, a pop over the period of basically four, we'll call it five trading days, five out of six, right? You had four huge days up. We take a pause. Yesterday, we accelerate as well. You have the S&Ps reaching a price level of 45.14. Folks, you're talking about more than 9% in five, six trading days. 9%, I think it was 9.3% was the number. Staggering pop in this market. Don't be surprised if you give back some of that action to the downside when you, you get a 9 to 10% pop over four or five days, folks. My goodness. Uh, jumping over to the Qs. You talk about a move. Qs are up like 13%, I think. Now, the Qs have not opened yet. They're going to open at about 354, so we don't have that on the chart yet. But you're talking about trading from a price point, folks, of 317.45, and I think we're even a little bit lower in the pre-market. Yeah, so if you take it from 315.71, you run it up to the 357, you're talking about 13% in the NASDAQ 100. Did you hear that? Let me just make sure it is. All right, I'm going to take the high there, 357.85. We're going to subtract the low, 315.71. That gives us a move of 42.14 points. It sure is 42 points off of 315.71. 13.35%, 13.35%, folks, 13.35% just by buying the Qs early yesterday, Tuesday, and closing out the action. Uh, uh, yesterday just remarkable in that index but we've seen the pop we've seen the acceleration and both times you know you get moves lower you get a bounce it's going to be big you get a 13 percent bounce yes you may get a pullback as well bitcoin cryptos yesterday bitcoin up to 43,490. we're basically flat this morning ethereum inching towards 3,000. we make it up to 3,062 yesterday we're at 2969 right now crude continuing to climb we're up right near the highs of early yesterday look at that action yesterday we make it to a high of one 1335 this morning we touch a high come on there we go 11353 so just above the high we had early yesterday and remember man you talk about some volatility uh yeah you dive from 113 and change to before we even opened the market yesterday you had a 10710 print on crude and just like that we're back to 113 within the span of about just over 24 hours of trading we jump to gold catching a little bit of a bid gold up nine dollars at 1931 you see the action though just kind of chopping around at this price level between about 1900 and maybe about 1950 since about last tuesday on gold you jump over to notes and bonds a little bit of a reprieve from the action in notes and bonds now check out the move in notes and bonds talked about it yesterday but man quite a dive 35 14 right you were already in a downward channel in terms of lower price and higher yield and basically, the market said that channel is not steep enough. We need negative action in price because yields are spiking. Absolutely remarkable, folks. When you talk about where we were, I think it was March 4th that we had a print on the 10-year. Uh, it was probably the weekend from March 4th over to March 7th. I believe you had a print on the 10-year of 1.698. It was barely a 1.6 handle. We'll just call it 1.7% because that's basically where it was approximately at. We're sitting near 2.4% right now, folks. 7 tenths percent in under three weeks almost. Just a remarkable move. Uh, don't be surprised if you get a little bit of a reprieve here in notes and bonds as well. We're not just going to run to 3%. It's not going to happen right now, folks, okay? You're not going to move from 1.7 to 3% in the span of a month or two. 
it could happen. This is my take, okay? I imagine you're going to get a bounce to higher price and lower yield, get back within this channel line. Um, but, you know, it's on a daily, folks. You can put it on your charts. Very simple daily. There's your acceleration from 135.14. We're sitting at 122.28 right now. Even if we get a bounce, don't fall trapped to that bounce, folks. It is lower prices. Even if we get back within that channel line, I imagine we're going lower. Uh, lower price, higher yield coming at you in a big way. We jump over to the VIX. Volatility index. For the first time in a while, let's put this back on a daily. Going back to, we have the COVID highs of 85.47. Talk about remarkable. Uh, you take that out of the chart, though. Many, many tops since then, as we've had some volatility, looks to be finally sustaining a, a dive to lower prices in the VIX, man. We were spiking near 35. We were spiking near 37.50. Finally, we have a sustained level. Whoops, let me back that out. Zoom in on this action right here. Finally, we have a sustained level, giving up that acceleration. My expectation is maybe we dive back to about the 20 area. We still got way too much volatility to get back below that area, at least right now. Geopolitical tensions, rising wages, supply chain issues, inflation, et cetera, all of that keeping the VIX in an elevated level. But since you've seen the market, right, think about it. We have the S&Ps up 9% over the last five or six trading days. We have the NASDAQ 100 up 13% over the last five or six trading days. And still the VIX is sitting at an elevated level of 24, 24 on that VIX. All right, let's jump around to some of the action this morning. We'll jump around to Adobe. They had their numbers trading a little bit lower. We jump into the action on Adobe last night. Adobe trades higher with the market. 471.98 was the high. We come into the close at about 466.45. You dive lower, and we're right back near the lows of that acceleration. You get the market trading lower, too. That is not going to help uh, a company that misses on earnings. Adobe down to 447.25 so far this morning. s and is down 25 points right now. Dow down 170. As I mentioned, though, folks, you know, you just got to back it up on a 10 day chart in a 30 minute. Can you even see the pullback? We got the S&Ps down six tenths percent right now. And we are barely, barely off of the highs that we made yesterday near the close of forty five fourteen. All right, let's jump around to some of our FANG stocks and see how they're kicking things off as we come into the first break. We'll be coming back, talking to our man Kevin Hinks from TD Ameritrade Network, Fast Market. We'll be talking to our man Teddy Kegstad coming up at 40 past the hour. We'll be talking some crude. We'll be talking some Forex markets. Always an interesting conversation, especially so now with these crude markets uh, and just the geopolitical everything going on across the globe uh, is that Forex market, especially important right now with everything so in flux. Amazon shares barely in the negative this morning, down about $20 at $32.76. Tesla had quite a day yesterday, right? Accelerates to $9.97.86. Couldn't quite hit that thousand mark. You're back to $9.79. 50 on Tesla this morning. We jump over to Google shares. I mean, all these tech stocks, man, just charging higher in a big way. Yesterday, I think Google was up 2.4%, something like that. Trades from about 27.30 up to 28.30. A hundred dollar rise settles near the 28 bucks. We jump over to Microsoft shares. Microsoft uh, barely off a bit to 301. And we jump to Apple shares. Apple, talk about a move, man. Take a look at Apple. The full run from back in October to the $3 trillion mark of 182.94. Some real volatility here, man. Talk about a bounce. Again, Apple's got 16 plus billion shares trading. Folks, every $10 is about $165 billion in market cap. Since March 15th alone, eight days ago, Apple's market cap has risen by more than 300 billion with a B, billion dollars to put that in context. But we're right back up at this recent high of March 3rd. Stay tuned, folks. Right back with Kevin. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps right now, negative 24 points on the session. We got about 12 minutes to go until the opening bell. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, on the TD Ameritrade Network, Fast Market, with your hosts, Kevin Hinks and Tom White, 12 noon Eastern time, right here on Tiger TV. They break down the day's market action. They walk you through, folks, talking about hypothetical trade setups, talking about the Thinkorswim platform. All right, you're talking defined risk. We got a VIX right now, sitting right near... 24. We got the S&P folks popping 9 plus percent over the last six days. We got the Qs popping like 13 percent. You talk about some volatility in this market. Kevin Higgs, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Well, here we go. The same script that we've had for the last couple days here is a soft opening. You know, norm, You know, the last several days it's open red, firmed up, and then turned green as the day went on. We'll see how today brings. Obviously, we don't know what today brings. We just gave some of the questions. The answers will be what happens in the actual market. But you got a number to, uh, this morning out of mortgage apps that isn't really surprising that it was a soft number based on what interest rates and yields have done in the last week or so. But that's uh, a big number. Purchases down 14%. Uh, so Jerome Powell speaking this morning. Let's see if he continues his hawkish rhetoric, or he calms it down slightly. Not a lot of top-tier economic data will get some durable goods tomorrow morning. That'll be our main uh, data point of the week. We're, we're near the end of earnings, so we don't have much going on there. Some good names, but not much. But uh, we'll see if the script for the last several days plays out again today, Tommy. So in general, Kevin, when you look at a market like this, I was doing the math last night and I had to check the calculator twice, man, because I said, really, the Qs are up like 13 percent, man, since early last Tuesday. Um, obviously, very tough to chase sometimes when you get a move that magnificent over an index, especially. We know equities can move, man, but even an index that is so heavily weighted to so few, like the Qs, 13 um, percent, even the S&P 500, Kevin, popping 9% from those lows early last Tuesday, barely a week. Uh, what do you look at as an investor, as a trader, when you get that type of a rise? I mean, I look at the action this morning, it's down 25 
points. You know, I say, of course you might get a pullback, man. The market's almost up 10% from where we were just a week ago. What's kind of, what do you deal with? Because I struggle myself sometimes saying, okay, you know, even if you're bullish right now, doesn't it have to pull back when you go up 10% over five or six days barely? Does, well, does it have to? The answer is no, it doesn't have to. <laughs> but, you know, the, the big question out there in investors' minds right now is, is this type of a bear market rally that should be faded? Or is this that now that the interest rate uncertainty is beginning to come more certain, is this a green light to buy these tech stocks? Remember, if you look at the market yesterday, Tommy, it was a who's who of tech stocks and, and large cap uh, stocks. It was the Amazon and Tesla in, in consumer discretionary. It was all the major names, Facebook, Google Alphabet. They, all the big names were up yesterday. So uh, the leadership yesterday was fabulous in terms of looking at the overall market. Now, how does that play out in the next couple of days? I wish I knew that, Tommy. I have no <laughs> idea. But we'll, we'll certainly trade them up and find out. That's that's for sure, man. I know. Talk about the million, not even million, the billion dollar, if not trillion dollar question right right now in this market, Kevin. Uh, Apple, and you, you said it, man, the leaders in the market, just so much strength. Um, I, I pulled up the numbers, man. Qs were up over 2%. I said, whoa, and I hadn't quite looked at all of those big FANG stocks, and yeah, they were all up, just staggering. 2%, man, 2.08, 2.4%. Apple alone, Kevin, just from where it was on March 15th, you're talking about adding about $300 billion in market cap, man. Not many, no, no, I'm not sure how many companies are even worth uh, $300 billion. Not many, but that's what they've added since March 15th to their market cap. Uh, of course, we come into already, Kevin, the, the end of the month right now, and it all kind of starts already again next week as in, in non farm we get the end of a couple weeks after that, we're going to get CPI data for the month of March. Uh, you know, we have some time in between then. And as you said, man, the market, talk about accelerating in, pricing in those rate hikes when we have a 10-year yield going from about 1.7 to 2.4%. Can you give us a little teaser, though, of what you're going to look for when we come to, of course, we're going to be looking at jobs, but wages, importantly. And then we've talked about it last, last time when we had the CPI, right? In terms of, I think your term was video game numbers when we see those numbers from March. <laughs> Uh, is is the focus going to turn to the core number for the Fed, Kevin? Are they going to try and say that maybe gas prices eventually will subside and they're going to focus on the core? What do you think is going to happen to the conversation? And again, they're big questions, man. But I'd just love to get your insight on how that number is going to get talked about when it's it's going to be a big number, man. Oil is still this morning trading at 113.62. We all know gas prices are approaching video game numbers, to put it. What do you think is going to happen when we get these, these type of numbers coming up for the month of March next month? Yeah, I think that's a great question. And the question is, where will the market focus its attention when we start getting inflation data for next month? Now, Remember, Tommy, a month ago, we got a flat, a, an unchanged, a 0.0, .0 wages monthly data. So that was interesting. Let's see the weight. You know, the first look we'll get at inflation is in the wages data come out the first week in the non-farm payroll data. We'll see what that'll start us off with a look at inflation. And then when we do get the CPI numbers, how are they going to look past that headline that'll probably be something in the silly uh, area and do they go back to the core the ex food and energy and and for inflation and that'll play out over time but it'll probably you know i love to look at the charts when the cpi data comes out and so see what sectors of the economy were really blowing up a month ago it was all energy tommy it was big numbers in energy i don't expect that to change very much but the market rallied on that because it was all energy, if you remember. So we'll see what, when this, these numbers start coming out. But I'm sure the expectations for the next CPI number are going to be uh, silly, I mean, to, to put it lightly. <laughs> it's so cool, man. I mean, you know, because trying to digest that just mentally yourself, saying, okay, we know they're going to be big. Is the core number going to get the attention? But then the, the next thing in my head goes, well, does that make sense? Is, is the market going to say, hey, just take food and energy out of the equation right now when food, Kevin, itself, we all know is just, man, the, the grocery store is just uh, 
pretty highly priced these days. That is a core component as well. It's not a core component, but in my household, man, that's a big household. You know, when you got kids in the household, as we all know. Uh, what are you guys talking about coming up on the show at 12 today, Kevin? Three good names to look at today. Uh, in the A block, we'll look at John Deere or Deere and Company, as it's known now. Ooh. Then we'll look at Marriott yeah. Hotel Change for kind of a reopening play. That's what, like, Folio will discuss. And then we'll look at an earnings play in Darden Restaurant, D-R-I. That go. is the oh. owner of, as you know, Olive Garden, Capital Grill, uh, Seasons 52, good restaurants like that. So a large restaurant chain coming out with earnings today as well. Seasons 52, a little well-known restaurant. One of my favorites, though. Healthy restaurant, but upscale. And uh, I'll give you a little anecdotal, Kevin. We were just at a Marriott this past weekend for my birthday. There you go, man. So we're people getting back out and about. John Deere, man, I can't wait to hear you take on that one. Talk about an acceleration from 3.30 to 4.30 over this man in no time. Kevin, thanks for the talk, the education. We'll be watching at 12, man. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. Have a great day, Tommy. Thanks for having me on. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den trading room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. we got the S&Ps down about 24 points right now. You put this thing on a daily, as I said, from 4808 down to about a low of 4130, we'll call it, on this chart. We make that level about three times, late February, early March, and then again on March 15th, quite the acceleration. Uh, S&Ps, 9 plus percentage points from the low. Qs, 13 plus percentage points from the lows. 
at some point it's going to need a breather, folks. Maybe today's that day. But as Kevin mentioned, man, weakness pre-market. We'll see if it holds throughout the day. We've only been open for less than one minute of trading so far, so far, so far. Uh, let's jump over to Adobe. See how they're trading after their earnings. Watch out below, man. 7.3% to the downside. We jump over to the daily. It's been quite a decline for Adobe, man, from 700 right now. You're talking about 431. Uh, with that type of an acceleration, seems like Adobe might be going down to challenge these lows. It had same thing when you look at where the S&P was, right, from February 24th. We were also down in that area on March 15th. Adobe looks to be coming back to challenge those lows. We put Adobe on the three-year weekly. And as you can see, again, kind of a critical area. Maybe that's a decent buy, though, man. But if you're buying this thing and it goes through this area, next stop is the COVID highs. Pre-COVID highs, we'll call it, of about 385. And we're trading right now at four, excuse me, 433 for Adobe shares. Excuse me. All right. Let's jump around to what else we got going on with stocks. We talked about... Uh, Adobe and yeah, how about the meme stocks? So GameStop was soaring after an SEC filing showed that Chairman Ryan Cohn had bought an additional 100,000 shares. So he's got 12% of the company, 11.9%. It's It's got to be remarkable being able to control markets, folks. Uh, Elon does it. Now you've got Chairman Cohen doing it with the meme stocks, okay? Yesterday, you accelerate from 95 to 123. Overnight, you make it up to 148. You're still up 6%. AMC had a huge run yesterday as well. Overnight, it had that run as well. You're still up 4% today. Bed Bath & Beyond with some action yesterday as well. You're basically flat this morning, but you saw the rise up to 25 almost. Closes out the day at about 2330. Uh, even the likes of Canopy Growth got an acceleration yesterday and overnight up to 772. We're up 2.4%. Keep your eyes on some of these folks. When they start to run, boy, watch out. And yesterday was the first time in a while, even overnight. Uh, I saw friends outside of the market, people in the den talking about it. Uh... Seemed like for the first time in a while, meme stocks back in vogue. And if they are back in vogue, it is not a one-day phenomenon, folks. Uh, not sure it's going to happen. But, boy, risk-reward-wise, risk, risk reward wise, last time they ran Canopy, they ran it up to 56.50, which correlated to the same high you had about in the period of 2018. Back up there in 2019. Runs it up there in the beginning of 2021. We come down, get below, below the COVID lows. Did not think that was possible. COVID lows of 9 bucks. Uh, canopy. Makes it to five and change, I think, 562. The low in Canopy this morning, you're up 3.3% right now on Canopy shares. Watch those meme stocks, folks. The Reddit boys and girls, they're at it again. Um, interesting, to say the least. We'll see where that goes. All right, General, General Mills, they're out with their numbers, strong numbers. Uh, they were higher pre-market, better than expected quarterly earnings. They make 84 cents, 6 cents above estimates, revenue in line with forecast. Demand for food at home continues to be elevated. We've been living this life for two years now, folks. There's certain things that we like about it. There's certain things we don't. The things we like about it, we're going to try and keep, like working from home, like maybe doing some more cooking. Uh, of course, people are going to be a little bit more comfortable spending more time at home because maybe they've built out their homes over the last two years, right? Maybe they've, they've spent all that money at Lowe's and Home Depot, which is why you've seen those charts accelerate so much. Maybe they put an extra pool in the back of the house. Uh, no, an extra pool. Maybe they put a pool in the back of the house. Maybe they did put an extra pool. Maybe they put an extra jacuzzi back there for the family. Uh, point being, everybody's a little comfortable at home. They spent the last two years hooking up their house, right? Maybe they tapped into a home equity line with a refinance, spent that money on their home, refurbished it, added something in the backyard, put a pool in there. If you could find a pool guy that would actually give you a quote to put a pool in over the last couple of years. And yeah, people more comfortable eating at home. The one thing they're not comfortable with, staying at home and not being able to do anything, which is why things are gonna change. They're gonna be talking about Marriott coming up on Fast Market. And yeah, some of these stocks, I mean, look at Marriott, right? You're, you're 170, man, you were up to 185, but look at this, I mean, you're relatively near recent highs from Marriott shares off of a COVID low of $46 on Marriott. And as I said, went away this past weekend to uh, the JW Marriott in Orlando. Great hotel if you have a chance to check it out. They have a phenomenal pool. Uh, it's got a lazy river on there. They're actually doing some construction work on it, trying to add some slides in there. Uh, I was with the family, with my dad. My birthday was Sunday. Had an absolutely great time. Uh, it was the first birthday that I got to like really celebrate with family because in three years, two, well, three birthdays in two years, because two years ago, my birthday's March 20th, um, 
I think Florida locked it down on like March 16th. I remember coming back and telling my family at the time, even we have a, my fiance has a young daughter who was 13, 14 at the time, uh, probably 13 at the time, two years ago. And she came home on Friday. No, she came home Thursday. And I remember telling her because states were shutting down. And I said, there's a high likelihood that over the weekend, uh, Florida's going to shut down. And this was about March 16th and 17th. And so I told her, when you go into school on Friday, if you need anything from your locker, I would get it because you're probably not going back on Monday. And that's exactly what happened. There were already states shutting down left and right. It was kind of foreseeable at that point. The market was already tanking at lows probably at that point. Um, and that's what happened. So my birthday in 2020, I had a good time with my family, but couldn't quite have a party. That was the initial, you know, two week lockdown is what we thought. 2021, getting there, but not quite there yet. Uh, not quite the big party, but 2022, man, we went away. We went to a hotel. It was fantastic. Uh, Disney. Now, we have some Disney in my newsletter, Rocket Equities and Options, folks. Uh, quite the pullback on Disney shares, man. You pull back to the 618, zooming in on, on the action of the run from about 79 bucks to 203. You've pulled back to the 618. Disney finding a little bit of a bounce. You're negative with the market today. Uh, now, this is spring week, spring break week going on right now in Florida. So the kids are out of school right now, at least where I am, and in many different areas of Florida. But you can't even get into Disney, folks. You need reservations, can't even get in there this week. I think the one park they had open was Epcot. Magic Kingdom, not happening this week. Uh, you can't even do it. They, they won't let you in. Uh, now, I imagine spring break, it's a big one. But it's not going to stop, folks. It's not in the, you know, being in Florida, very fortunate. We have the, the parks and the, the tourist attractions that are built out that we get to use. Bush Gardens, for instance. I joined Bush Gardens. We got an annual membership now there. Uh, didn't make it to Disney for this trip, but we're probably going to go back there at some point in the next few weeks, month, hopefully before it gets too hot. It's going to persist, folks, in a big, big way. Disney, I imagine at some point that ship will right itself, but they're dealing with some issues right now. But, man, they are going to benefit, folks, when they get the park business rocking and when movies are back in vogue, which is just about to start, I think, because uh, we've reached the point. People pretty comfortable. Um, the only people, folks, that probably are looking at this that they're not getting back to life, and I was in that position, is if you have kids that are waiting to potentially offer them the vaccine before they're exposed, I was in that boat. And then our family got exposed to Omicron. And so then, you know, I was trying to get the kids vaccinated and make sure that they do well. Um, when they were eventually exposed, they got exposed. Fortunately, they did well anyway. And now we're a little bit more comfortable getting back out. And many people are in that scenario, folks. Market's pulling back a bit, but man, it's been a run over the last five or six days. Can't even find it on this weekly chart, right? There's your acceleration last week, folks. Quite a bar in a big way. All right, stay tuned. Stay tuned. We'll be coming back talking to our man Teddy Kegstat from forex-trading-unlock.com. We'll be talking some forex. We'll be talking some crude oil. We'll be right back, folks. Stay tuned. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. Peter White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got the markets right now in negative territory. We've got crude oil up another 4.6%. We're now above the highs we had yesterday. You got a 114 handle in crude. That's up from 107 early yesterday, folks. Quite the acceleration. You're up five bucks on the session to four point. That's 4.6% 4 in the positive. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Cakes. That we talk to Teddy every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. You can reach Teddy every, every trading day at his website for dash trading dash unlock.com teddy kegstad good morning good morning tommy so like we have been what do you think of the action in crude man i'll give you a little i i'm i'm a little surprised myself after waiting to 94 bucks teddy last week end of last wednesday we're up 20 dollars right now man the run not continuing you might not be a mm -hmm. surprise what's your take on this action on crude man uh, well, last week I was saying it was just a corrective uh, profit-taking move, and we're right back where I thought we would be. Um, we're going to 150, and you know what? Odds are we're going to see. You know, I mentioned you know already months ago that 150 would be a longer-term target, and even 200 if the way things are going. So, um, and now that seems to be a, a consensus now. You know, and I think that that's very likely to happen. I mean, the surge in so many other commodities and everything else is just a. It's a domino effect. It's not stopping right now anytime soon, you know, especially with the new way the Fed's speaking now, too. The cost of carryover is going to explode over the course of the next year, you know. So, I mean, the cost of oil is going to go up, you know. So, I think, yeah, absolutely, the oil markets are supported. We're not going to see any type of reprieve in this whatsoever until, well, you overturn the mandate from, you know, January 20th of 2020. So, that's what we need. <clears throat> Now, currency. quite the run for sure to one four to one fourteen. Yeah. Let's jump to currency. So, with all the action going on, of course, mm -hmm. quite the move, man. Over the last few weeks in yields, just remarkable, man. One point seven mm -hmm. percent to two point four percent on the ten year. Um, what are you looking at for for forex markets to start things okay. off today? Well, that coupled with the oil, the I mean, remember. When we had the Fed announcement last week, we were all looking for the quarter point. We got it. Now, we, we've we talked about this for months before they even started. I said, I'm like, they need to do a half a point at a time. You know, some people say that's a little overzealous. Now that speech is coming out that they're going to start doing half points instead of quarter points. I mean, we're looking at we could see by the end of the year where interest rates will have been up, be up 2%. You know, I mean, that's a big jump considering that they've been very, very slow to act for the past couple of years to begin with. You know, so now this whole thing is driving the trend. So it's supporting the dollar. You know, I mean, between oil and the interest rates, it's really, really helping certain trends. Now, it, it's definitely weighing on the euro um, and the Swiss right now because of the Ukrainian conflict and stuff. Now you couple the, the uh, what's going on geopolitically. It's also throw in the higher interest rates, you know, and then you also throw in, you know, the price of oil. 
this is making the euro US dollar look like it could be heading towards parity within the next couple of uh, months for sure you know unless there's some ease in tension between Russia and also the Ukraine that markets in a bear market now we have divergence though you know so we're going to see dollar strength in some currencies and dollar weakness in the others you know the Australian dollar for instance and New Zealand dollar those are bulls now you know they pretty much have bottomed the only thing that would change that is if well, either they go back into COVID lockdowns or if they have some kind of major shift in uh, commodity pricing, you know. So we have dollar divergence. You know, I think this, these trends are now set for the next couple of months, if not the next couple of years. You know, we're not looking to get out of this thing anytime soon. You know, we mentioned before about the Ukrainian thing, like nothing with Russia ends quickly. So yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't I would be very surprised if six months from now we're we're already past and through this conflict, you know, and everything is settled. You know, so I mean and this is starting to hit, you know, other markets too. You gotta realize that as, as oil continues to go up, I mean, I don't know how it is in Florida, but you can tell the roads here out in Chicagoland that during the day, people are they're making choices now. They're not just willy-nilly going out for coffee and going there and then this and that. Everyone's doing, I'm pretty sure, they have a list of things to do, and that's what they're doing, and then they're going home, you know? I mean, you can even see it in the restaurants, too, now on the weekends that it's the weather is getting better and you're not seeing restaurants overflowing with people now that everything is everyone can go out you know i mean even in cook county you can you don't need to have a vaccine passport you don't need to wear a mask you know so i mean it's uh kind of surprising you would everyone wanted to see a different reaction and i think the oil prices is going to suppress that but dollar strength is going to stay i mean we have uh as long as the fed is on this track it would be really hard to see the dollar get really hurt, you know, except for some of your commodity uh, uh, currencies like U.S. dollar Canada very likely could be a bear over the longer run. You know, um, like I said, Aussie and New Zealand, those are setting trends. The U.S. dollar yen. Now, there's something where <laughs> you thought if you thought I was happy last week. I mean, look at how it's up another two dollars over the past week. You know, so that 122 price target, I think, is very viable now. We're just floating right below it. And if these trends are really solid and things stay this way over the course of the next six months to the next year, I mean, to see the yen up at 140 would not be out of the realm of possibility. Yeah, just remarkable moves, man. These Forex pairings up as you're talking about them, man. You put them on a weekly even. You don't have to, man, mm -hmm. because you could put them on a 15-minute. Uh, you could put them on an hourly. And this move, like you said, I got the dollar yen up here, man, just staggering, right, from 115 mm -hmm. to 121, like you said. But we were at 104 at the beginning of last year. Mm -hmm. and it just almost right. never stopped, man, the run that it's had. Remarkable. And I would agree, geopolitical tensions especially, but it's especially interesting that we're coming into a rate hike environment that isn't going away anytime soon. Uh, right. I was talking to our man Kevin Hinks to kick things off. I think we're all aware that the CPI numbers are going to be a little bonkers, at least for the next couple months, because gas prices are crazy, energy prices are crazy, food prices are still crazy. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe as we get down the road, three, six months down the road, we might be dealing with some comps that will make it difficult to be dealing with some pretty crazy numbers. But the mm -hmm. Fed's hiking, man. They're hiking this year. The market said it with that 1.7 to 2% rise, 2.4% rise. So that's not going away anytime soon. And I agree. Right. Even if we get some kind of deal that I don't expect, Mm -hmm. They got a handshake deal and everything's over. That's not how it's going to go, man. There's going to be tensions. How are they going to break things up? Is is Russia going to get some of the separatist region, right? How does that play out? Mm -hmm. There's going to be tension there, man. Um, and they're probably going to be dealing with sanctions that's going to escalate things for the foreseeable future, no matter what, as Russia's right. a little bit isolated. And that's a scary proposition, no matter how they come out of this. I don't imagine it being rosy, man. The world's just not going to lift all those sanctions overnight um, right. after what's been done. So I, I, I agree that that's, that's going to persist. Um, mm -hmm. And it's almost time flies, as we all know, man. I mean, this right. has been going on for a month. That is crazy when you think about yeah. that the, the war has almost been going on for a month over there. Um, those poor people, you know, the, the citizens, right. really. I, I just Absolutely. can't imagine, you know, with young kids in my house, kids, the worst of it all, of course. Um, sure. But pretty, pretty wild stuff. Uh, right. We got about a minute here as we come in, Teddy. What, uh, as we come into, so next week we come into the non-farm payrolls, I believe, on April 1st, which is Friday. And then we get mm -hmm. some CPI numbers next week. You, do you factor any of that into what you're looking at? Or are we just kind of marching on right now because the market's kind of set regardless of what we mm -hmm. get in the next 30 days for debt or something like that? 
Uh, well, definitely the CPI. I mean, even months back, I said this six months ago, that as we move forward now, your your big economic numbers are once again very important now, like CPI, PPI, and what have you. And I think they're going to drive the bond market even more. They're going to help accelerate the uh, rise in interest rates. That acceleration in bonds, man. Notes, yeah. wow. I love Teddy, it. <laughs> we appreciate the conversation as always, man. We'll talk to you next week. Week. Thank you. Folks, reach Teddy, forex-trading-unlock.com. We'll be Sharpening right back. Sharpening your the skills show. as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the inventor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the market, excuse me, markets tailing off a bit. We got the S&Ps right now down about eight tenths percent. It's been sell off territory since about 2 a.m. this morning. Lots of red bars there. We sell off a little bit on the open. We're down eight tenths. You get the NASDAQ 100 down 1.1 percent right now. 14,490 Dow off about eight tenths percent. Checking in with some of the meme stocks. GameStop up another 12 percent right now. AMC up 7.6 percent right now. Bed Bath & Beyond down 4 percent right now. You got winners and losers over there. I talked about Canopy. Canopy up 3.8 percent. A little bit of volatility in there as well. Some of the short percentages, folks, of these stocks. Who is shorting a stock like Canopy? That is at $6 to $7, folks. You know who is? 19% of the float in Canopy is short. Now, because Canopy has some issues with warrants, they got a lot of insiders controlling the shares. Uh, the float and the amount of shares differ greatly. So the percentage of the shares outstanding, only about 12%, but that's not as important as the short percentage per the float. 
Canopy growth, about 19%. AMC, about 19%, folks. Canopy, the same percentage as AMC. Now, we have a trade in Canopy going on this morning. As I talk about it for disclosure, talking about it, you should know that we do have a trade on it. Um, but it's important to understand those short percentages. Now, GameStop, the original meme stock of them all, 25% short percentage. All right. God bless those people, man. Um, we'll see how that plays out. Pretty remarkable what's going on over there. All right. A couple more headlines as we wrap up the program here. Uh, this one's interesting on a geopolitical spectrum uh, perspective, I should say. You got a Putin advisor quitting over the Ukraine war and leaving Russia. Obviously, he's he's high enough in the ranks to be able to get out of the country. How do you get out of there? Uh, Longtime reformer had been Cle the Kremlin's climate envoy. Few senior insiders have going public opposing the invasion. I'm not familiar with this man. Uh, maybe many are, but nonetheless, he opposes it. He's left Russia. Be interesting to see if more of that comes to fruition, especially some of those oligarchs, if they really start speaking out uh, there as well. How about global bond losses? $2.6 trillion we're at, folks. That is the number. A drop in the index of a value of about $2.6 trillion. Be careful in those fixed income markets, folks. Lower prices coming at you. And then another one, day traders taking money out of the market and selling last week. Interesting stuff. Stay tuned, folks. We got Basil Show next. Live programming after that all day. Have a great Wednesday, everybody. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.